In this lesson, we will study about a debugging tool of Visual Studio Code. Debugging means finding the errors in your code. You can identify and finally resolve those errors. Secondly, this debugging tool can be used to see the working sequence of the code. To explain that, I have written this simple code. Suppose that two friends Ali and Ahmed had a business and they got a profit of 100,000. Now suppose that Ali has 70% shares in the business while Ahmed had 30%. So the profit will be shared on this basis. So line number 3 and 4 is calculating the profit share based on the respective ratios. Those individual profits are printed on line number 5. But suppose that they decided to give a little share to their friend Anwar who guided them in this business. So Ali decided to give 10% of his share while Ahmed decided to share 15% of his share to Anwar. So this line number 7 is doing that calculation. But now of course the shares of Ali and Ahmed must be decreased by 10% and 15% respectively and that is being done on line number 8 and 9 using the augmented assignment. And finally we are printing the share of Ahmed, Ali and Anwar. If I will run this code it will show the final results. But suppose instead of running the program in one go I want to run it in two steps. For that I can insert a breakpoint in my code. The code execution will stop at that breakpoint. If you move your mouse on the left side of these line numbers, you can see a small circle appearing over there. If you click that, a breakpoint will be inserted over there. So I have inserted a breakpoint on line number 7. Now it means that code will stop on line number 7 in debugging mode. So let's see how we can start the debugging mode. For that click this debugging icon. Click run and debug. Select the first option python file. And now you see this line number 7 is highlighted. It means that code till line number 6 has been executed and it stopped on line number 7. You can see the output 70,000 and 30,000 which is the output of line number 5. You can see a couple of windows here and we will talk about that in a moment. See these few buttons appeared which are for different debugging action. This first one is continue which we can activate by pressing F5 also. What it does is it continues the execution of the code until the next breakpoint or if there is no more breakpoints then till the end of the program. So we don't have any breakpoint after line number 7 so it will continue till the end of the program. So if I press that so you can see that program has executed completely and this output is corresponding to line number 11. So that's how we can insert different breakpoints in our program. One breakpoint means the program is divided into two parts. Two breakpoints means it is divided into three parts and so on. Let's run the code in debugging mode again. After continue button we have skip over button and then step into button. Let's first see step into button. If we press that it will not execute the next block of the code but it will just execute the highlighted statement and move to the next statement and will stop at next statement. So it is used to execute one step of the code. So if I press that, you can see now line number 8 is highlighted, which means line number 7 has been executed and interpreter is waiting on line number 8. If I press that once again, you can see now line number 9 is highlighted, meaning that line number 8 has been executed. Pressing one more time will move it to the next line and now line number 11 which is the last line is highlighted. So if I press that now, you will see the corresponding output and the code has finished. So this way is very useful to see the sequence of code working and for example if you are studying some new statement like the if statement you can run the code in step by step mode and actually see the sequence of the code. To run the complete code in step by step mode starting from the first line till the last line I should insert the breakpoint on line number 1. So when I run that in debugging mode the interpreter starts on line number 1 which is the first line. And then by pressing that step into button, I can execute the code step by step. Usually we insert the breakpoint on the line before which we don't have any issue or the logic is very clear to us. And after that we want to run the code step by step. So I'll put that on line number 7 again and we'll rerun in the debugging mode. Now let's discuss about these windows. The first window is variable window. It shows all existing variables of your program and their corresponding values. Variables can be local or global. We will see their difference later on but at the moment all variables are local variables. If you see carefully in this window, 
you will find all variables till line number 5 and you will not find share anwar variable because it is not defined till line number 5. So now if I press step into button which executes line number 7 defining the share anwar variable and now you can see that variable in the variable window along with its value. So in that way this debugging can be very helpful to see the different values inside the variables while you are running that in step by step mode. Now if I move to the next step it will update the share early variable and you can see the updated value on the variable window. Likewise share Ahmed variable is updated. The updated variables are also highlighted in the variable window. Now let's run that again and see the use of next window which is watch window. In variable window, we have all variables of the program. There can be hundreds of those variables, but maybe we are just interested in a couple of variables for the debugging purpose. And for that, we use the watch window. So I will press this plus symbol and can type in the variable name in which I am interested. For example, share Anwar. You see, it gives the name error here because share Anwar variable is not yet defined till the last line executed by the interpreter. Now let's press the plus symbol again and instead of the variable name, I can also write some expression that involves one or more variables. Why would we need that? For example, in this scenario, a little share is given to Anwar by both Ali and Ahmad and it is important for us to see if the sum of shares of all three of those is equal to 100,000 or not. We are doing some calculations on line number 7, 8 and 9. So just as a check, I want to verify that the final sum of all three shares must be 100,000. So I can write that expression over here which will give me the sum after each step. I can also write the expression like this sum equal equal to profit so that it will be returning true or false. But at present I will keep it as it is. Again there is the name error because one variable in this expression is not defined yet. If we run one step, now you can see the values on the watch window. The value of share Anwar is 11,500 and the sum of three shares is more than 100,000. Because we haven't updated share Ali and share Ahmed yet, which is being done on line number 8 and 9. So if I run the next step, the value of sum is updated, but share Ahmed on line number 9 is yet to be updated. So I will press the next step and now you can see this sum is 100,000, which verifies that there is no issue in our logic. So now let's see this particular program which we wrote in the last lesson. Here we have one if statement on line number 2 after taking the first number on line number 1 and then there is another condition on line number 8 on the number taken on line number 7. If I want to see the executions of these if statements, I can place the breakpoint on line number 2 which is the first if statement. So that interpreter will execute line number 1 and then will stop on line number 2. It is executing line number 1 and asking for the user input. If I enter 46, now line number 1 is completely executed and you can see line number 2 highlighted. We know the condition is true. So the next statement must be the print statement on line number 3. So if I press step into button, interpreter executed the condition, checked that it was true, so it entered into the block of the if statement. And you can see line number 3 is highlighted. Now in next step, this line number 3 will be executed and then the interpreter must jump to line number 7 because else block will not be executed. So let's see that. So you can see the output of line number 3 and the next highlighted line is line number 7. If I run the next step, it's executing line number 7 and asking for the user input. I entered 400 and now line number 8 is highlighted which is checking if the condition is true or false. We know the condition is false, so interpreter must jump to the else block, which is starting from line number 11. Let's see that by running the step, and you can see that happening. Now from line number 11, it will move to line number 13, which is the next line, and it is not linked to any condition. So please execute a couple of programs in debugging mode, and you will see the working sequence of your program. Other than removing the bugs from the code, this debugging tool is also helpful to see the sequence of the code which is important when you study a new statement. So that's all from this lesson. Thanks for watching.